This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. What is happening, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of Currently on No Other Pod on Kansas City Sports Network, your home for the best soccer commentary in the Midwest. I'm Daniel Kuzer here with Chris Wright, talking about the undefeated KC Current. What is up, dude? How you doing? In the Midwest, man, don't sell us short. You know, we got to oh, go a little, oh, little in the broader. universe. In the universe. <laughs> no, and in the game, you know, in the side. I just system. get the hyping us up, dog. I get the hyping us. Best soccer podcast in the Milky Way. Like. In, in the land. How about that? All the land. All the lands. Bro, this, uh, what's going on? How, how's your weekend? It was good, man. Went by quickly. Um, a fun game. We we were able to Matt. attend. Your voice looks, uh, or looks, sounds a little it, raspy. Does it sound raspy? Is it noticeable? A little bit. A little bit. Oh, that's good. I'm only going to go audition for a musical tonight. We'll probably just struggle the whole time. That's good. Good times. Another uh, another reason to blame the refs, right? Fucking hell. Listen, I got my seats, uh, my tickets upgraded for this game uh, uh, from my season ticket rep. And we were over in the West Club area, section 101, about five rows from the field. Neat little place to watch the game from. Probably some seats I'll never have again. And, uh, you know, while we're at it, man, I'll just I'll just tell the experience here. The seats, a little uncomfortable. A little more uncomfortable than our normal seats up in the uh, uh, 226 area, you know? It, they were a little more narrow, it felt. The mesh seats, I, I don't know. It just felt it felt different, right? But you had cool buns. You know, you didn't. You had the mesh uh, and everything with the air going through it. Woo, breezy buns. But uh, the food, I tell you what, if you're not a plant-based eater, as I am, uh, I, I do do, I do do, I do plant-based. But if you if you eat meat, they had quite the spread, dude. I mean, they had they had dogs, they had uh, cold cut sandwiches, coolers full of drinks. You could go grab beers, and it was all all inclusive. Uh, they had fruit cups and stuff like that. But I brought my brother, who is a meat eater, and he he strapped on the feed bag and <laughs> had a hell of a time. <laughs> But uh, it's worth it. Yeah, but then you're well, come on, dude. When you're that close to the freaking line judge and he's like missing off sides calls or fouls right in front of him, a man like me is gonna lose his voice. It's just gonna happen. And I was so mad at this dude with the shortest shorts showing off his, his sweater uh, of uh, of of leg hair. <laughs> so you're saying he wasn't very cold, right? He was pretty Listen. pretty warm and toasty. He was, he was. Uh and and it only rained for a little bit out there, right? Not too bad. But I was I I ain't leaving, dude. I'm not going to the shelter. I'm staying out there getting wet. It's just a little water, right? Just a little bit of water. Absolutely. And you, uh, you your your partner watched from the stands while you went to the the press box. Yeah. I was uh, yeah. able to do uh press, which was a lot of fun. My first Dope. time doing it in the new stadium. So Yeah, how was that? It was a really cool experience. I, you know, I appreciate uh, Jeff um, for for making it work for me and getting me taken care of. But Absolutely. a different experience. It's louder. Like, you know, the press box is louder because that sound just hits the the top of the the awning or the the roof and then just hits the press box. Mm. Um, so, you know, if you're in the if you're in the stands, it's still really loud, but it just seems so much louder in the press box. Uh, but nice. It, it's a lot of fun to to get a different vantage point. That's a little higher, so I get to see more of a top down bird's eye perspective, which is uh, which is a lot of fun. Very cool, very cool indeed. Um, did you stick around for like post game stuff at all? No, I had to I had to take off for some some work stuff. But uh, cool, working on working on a Sunday. Look look what they got you doing. You must be on that salary now, huh? You're off that hourly pay. They put you on the salary. That's when you got to work weekends. Yeah, and and Monday is our busiest day of the month for work. So it's Good. tough times, it's but uh, you think it's cool. You're like, man, I'm a salaried employee, and it's like expectations come with that shit, and it's uh, it's not all great. It's like, yeah, I don't have to clock in and out and stuff, but uh, still sucks in certain ways. <laughs> you're, you're not necessarily nine to five, right? Uh, I, the place I was at was like, uh, uh, you know, your salary, we only expect you to work 40 hours. And I was like, well, that's kind of cool and not that way everywhere else. So 
yeah. a little different. You, you think you do more than 40 a week? I do more than 40, but it's not it's not a large amount, though. I think it's yeah. reasonable. It's, it's probably 40 to 45. Cool. So I, won't, I won't make you bash your job on here or anything like that. We're not here to put people on blast. But, dude, I will <clears throat> tell you, we're still tied. Uh, well, we still have first place uh, in the in the standings. Uh, but right there with us continue to be the Orlando Pride. And uh, if anyone listening has not circled that game in July, that Orlando Pride game, I mean, it's sounding pretty important because they, they just keep winning as well. Um, and then shortly right behind us is Washington Spirit. And it's like we just can't get away from anybody. Everyone's kind of staying tight to us at the top. So every game becomes very important as we go. And this game, this game was different because it kind of really felt like we could have we could have won by like four goals, right? It really felt like we were putting on the pressure uh, to making them turn the ball over every chance we got. Haley Mace was all over the fucking field. You could, if you were like, uh, what, what side does Haley Mace play on, left or right? I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah, she all was. She was all over, all dude. Orders of the field is where Haley Mace I, You love to see it. Uh, she was putting in all the effort. Uh, Chawinga, still doing her thing, man, but it, it became... It became a little monotonous for me because our, our goal, it's just like, hey, get it to Chwinga. Just get it up there and she'll go. But it's like when she's so fast, there's no one on her team that can catch up to be there for that second pass. And Dabinia was a couple times, but it, it it's hard. Well, especially when you just, you know, she's the only person up by midline or, or further you boot the ball, you know, she's going to. There's a good chance she's going to win it. She's off to the races, but the rest of the team just watching. They're, yeah, well, even if they're running full speed, that play is going to be over by the time they get there. Yeah, they're not um, even there for a follow up uh, until they were. I mean, we'll we'll get into the second half here, but like it, it, it we just I don't know, man. It's it's that's she's the game too fast man. for her own good though. Like she's yeah, she's too fast for her own good, and a lot of times it certainly works out. But you just have to know what you're getting. Is you're just not getting. Uh, those runners are going to be there at the time she she makes a play. This is the pleasure we have to nitpick things like this from an undefeated team. You still got to point out stuff. You know what I mean? You can't just be like, "Woo, we're the best." Because I I'm not sh- I don't know if we are the best, but I think we've been playing very well. Um, it, it's been it's Chewing is not really a creator, so to speak. Um, but if someone else is there. I mean, she can do a little one-two with them, and it's it's beautiful. Well, we saw that with uh, with Hutton, with Claire Hutton. You know, we'll talk about it, but leading up to the goal, yeah, there's some nice one-two. And um, like you said, it, it's a privilege to be able to be critical of yeah. a player who is MVP candidate, is a player yeah. who's like what, second or third in, in the golden boot, a player who, when you watch, just your jaw drops how impactful she is and we're, and we're still being somewhat critical. Yeah. And, and I think to be fair, you know, I think what separates her from a whole nother level is her ability to keep her head up, find players. Cause there are some times we've talked about it again, this is a privilege, but there are some times when, you know, she has her head down, right? She's trying to make a play. She's trying to go to goal, but there's a player who might have an open lane. If she's able to to get that pass off or the extra touch, maybe you know we'll have a we'll be in a better situation. Um, yeah, to have a, a, a shot on goal. So that's again, this is a privilege, but I would like to see that be the next evolution in her game. And if she does that, I mean, the sky's the limit. Yeah, and the thing is, like she she's a new player to this league, yeah. right? So she's still probably learning certain things. Yeah. Um, any word on Bia's return? What what what's everyone? Have you heard anything? I have not. Um, no timetable, huh? No, no timetable. I but with foot crazy, foot sprain or what? I, I it's foot. I don't know what the exact. But that sucks if, because she needs those for this game. <laughs> yeah, and you know, do we really need to force her back or rush her back? You know, we're well undefeated, or well, we haven't lost, dude. Maybe maybe she maybe she holds out for a little month and comes back when we start to play the Orlandos and the Washingtons. You know what I mean? I mean, we got Dabinia back, and she made a clear, 
it you know that, that's another thing and i know we're kind of going off topic or on the side here but never done that before <laughs> never done that what's that vladko has done a really good job of managing minutes managing injuries um having faith and confidence in the team and, and players to come in and step up for a player that you're like oh, i wish we didn't pull i wish we didn't pull vanessa de bernardo off right because she's Incredible player. I would like to have her for another 15, 10, 15 minutes. We pull her off, you know, Lavo J or, or somebody else comes on, and then we end up getting points, you know, getting the win or getting a draw. And it, it worked out, you know, these decisions he's making has not really backfired at this point. So yeah. I think he deserves credit for taking some of those chances and, and giving those players the opportunity to, to, to show up on the field. Absolutely, man. It's uh, it's huh, it's always a privilege to be out there at the stadium watching, um, being around like minded people and motivated enough fans to to spend their time and money to be out there on on a Mother's Day. Um, there definitely was no dip in attendance, that's for sure. If anything, all the moms showed out. Um, it, it was just a, a great atmosphere, man. Um, I want to take a quick break before we jump into this game, and uh, stay right there. We'll be right back. We appreciate you supporting KC Sports Network by listening to our podcast. You have helped us become the highest ranked Chiefs podcast network in 2022 and 2023. And don't forget about our daily Substack newsletter, the best written analysis you can find on the Chiefs straight to your inbox every day. KCSN.substack.com Bro, did you get your season ticket member package yet? I did. Quick shout out to uh, Chip who picked it up for me and, and gave it to me this on Sunday. So, oh, Chip picked yours up, uh, like uh, from the stadium on another day or something. Yeah, it was on one of those allocated times, and he held on to it for me. So, so I, I was supposed yeah. to go to uh, guest services, which is not clearly labeled. By the way, it's not labeled at all. It's more like a, it looks like a window where maybe you go order cheeseburgers or something, <laughs> a little fast food window, but. So I, my ass is walking. I, I'm with my brother. So I'm like, eh, let's just walk the stadium. You know, you've never been here. Small stadium, so it won't take us very long. You can see all the, the good food we got. And he was, he was very impressed. He, it's his first ever soccer game, by the way. Never been to a soccer game. Uh, but, and I will say at the end of it, he was like, dude, if you ever have extra tickets again, like, let me know. And I said, uh, I, I will never get that ticket that gets you free food again. That will probably <laughs> never happen because those run very steep in price. Um, but we've been doing a good thing lately. Uh, our group is offering our tickets to like people who've never been to a game. And I think that's been kind of cool to grow new fans. Back to guest services. I see guest services phone number that you can text or whatever. And I'm like, I'm going to text them. And I was like, I was like, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was nice about it. I was like, uh, hi there. What, where are you located? And they told me I was over in that section just like, You'd think there'd be something labeled, I guess. But uh, I kind of walk up there. I was like, is this guest services? <laughs> the last boy. I felt really, can you call my mom? <laughs> uh, anyways, got my stuff. We like our little commemorative ticket that are actually our section and seat numbers. That's really cool. That is really, really cool. I've still got this sporting ticket from the Inter-Miami game. That's just kind of a generic uh, ticket, you know. And I thought that was kind of neat. And Casey Current did essentially the same thing yeah, it's, with our numbers on there. Yeah. Don't, don't show people where we sit. Oh, it's a secret. Ah. <laughs> You're going to have so many fangirls coming out to you, bro. Are you Chris? You're like, yes, I'm Daniel too, if you care. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, man, the hype coming into this game was there. Uh, lineup comes out. No surprises, really. I mean, Dabinia, I guess, back in the starting lineup. Um, haven't seen that for a minute. Um, and and even ends up getting on on the score sheet. But what do we uh, – got our first goal of the season, man, uh, which is what, the 12th player? 13th, I think. It's 13th. I think it's thir – well, let me double check. Uh, I, I mean, Labonta also hit a career milestone of 10,000 minutes played. Now, that was wild, too, because as the stadium announcer was talking, we were, like, in a very serious attacking phase, and I was just like, shut up, shut up, everybody shut up. <laughs> but I get it. You got to announce it on the minute, you know? And, and by the way, she is the 12th. So. 12th. The 12th, yeah. What's the record on that, I wonder? Because I want it. It's 14. what? 
14. There is, there's, there's, there's opportunity. That's not outside the realm of possibility. We I still mean, have we, Cooper, uh, Nichelle yeah. Prince. We have, um, you know, yeah. Hutton's knocking. Hutton is My knocking God. on the door, baby. My God. Uh, I don't know, you know, the Seattle game. She put a, a, a bunch of shots on frame there. Um, yeah. A, a center back. We, we have like, a Seattle game to talk about too, don't we? We do. Damn. Um, it has been a week. It's been a, it's, it has been really, it's been by quickly. But uh, you could take like a, a couple center backs, right? You could take a look at Ball, um, Ballasaga, Robinson, yeah. you know. Very true. Mace. Has, I don't, has Mace scored? I don't Mace think. has not, not this year, but she can. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, it's it's going to happen. I mean, those are we'll four or five there. players right there that could. Yeah. I'm here for it. Um, cool. I do want to talk about this Mother's Day game since it's fresh in our minds, and then we can go back and, and talk about uh, Seattle celebrating a, a nil-nil home draw, whatever. Uh, <laughs> book losers. Uh, dude, when they, a one-nil win is tough and should make you feel really good. Um doesn't make me feel really good when we were averaging like four goals at home, right? I was like, let's lay it on, man. Keep it coming. Uh, so one nil takes a lot of freaking uh, gumption to get done. But they did it. Yeah, Vlaco talked about it in his conference. Like he's really proud of, of this one nil win. I don't know. Your mindset's much different when you're up 5-3 or 4-2 or 3-1. But this game was on the score sheet was close. I mean, obviously the efficiency of the attack wasn't. And, you know, when you watch it, the current had the, you know, the better opportunities. And you felt like if any anybody was going to score, it was going to be the current. But, you know, it was 1-1. I'm sorry, it was 0-0 for a lot of the game until Dabini put the ball in the back of the net. And to, to maintain that mindset, that tough mindset, after a very difficult and challenging, you know, road schedule. Yeah. Now... The, the first half was pretty rainy, by the way. So, I mean, that, that impacts the game. That makes the ball move faster. Um, also made the players move faster. We were all over that field, man. Ibrahara was running the midfield. Haley Mace was just running down defenders. Uh, it, it was wild to see. But it slowed up for a pretty dry second half. I mean, if you had to sum up the first half, I'd say it like this. Chawinga did some things, made some attempts. Dabinia made some attempts. Uh, we threatened, just never executed, right? I think we shut down their possession game really well. Uh, we did not allow them just to possess, hold the ball, hold the ball, possess, have an attack, get the ball back, and just play their game. We talked about it last week. You get up early, and they just don't know what to do. Like, they can't yeah. score from behind. And that's, once we got up, this is essentially what happened. The the gold, or the, the extra G, by the way, um, 2.9, According to FB reference, yeah. two point nine for the current, point three for the courage. Like shut them down, shut them down, and that that goes into it, it feeds into the last three games. I know they're not offensive powerhouses, right? Right. Houston, Seattle, North Carolina, not exactly high powered offensive teams, but we've only allowed one goal, and the amount of xg probably combined. Is incredibly low. I feel like our defense has played exceptionally well these last three games. Yeah, you said we've only allowed one goal. What are you, what are you talking about? This over the last three games. Sorry, like the last so three games. Gotcha. Yeah, and that was an error. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we a lot of goals have let you know been from like concentration relapses and stuff like that. I mean, it is what it is. Um, but dude, it, it all our aggressiveness paid off. I mean, in the fifty second minute. Uh, Chewinga put gives the ball to someone. Who would she give the ball to? It was Hutton. They did nice. Hutton even go. Who gives it right back to her? Who puts a shot on target? Keep her ass outstretched. Just taps it. And who's there? Right place, right time. Dabinia stayed on side. Taps it in. Gives a big L. I don't know what the meaning of that is when she does that, but uh, I'm here for it. It was for the uh, player that I believe has cancer. Really? Yeah. I was just like, sure, no, L for love. Uh, let's do uh, L for North Carolina losers. But I think that, uh, that I, dude, I'm reading that Dabinia has scored against every active NWSL club except Bay FC. Wow, which one? That's crazy. That's wild. I'd be, 
I'd be dying to score on Bay. I'd be like, I I need to complete the uh, complete the round, if you will, complete the journey. Well, if she played, we might have had a couple more against Bay. Yeah. Dude, I got to uh, I got to see all the the players warmed up literally right in front of us. So that was kind of neat. Um, literally just right there. I mean, Ellie's doing her little fast sprints. I'm like, God damn, she's fast. Michelle Prince comes over there. Uh, uh, Desi's over there. They're just doing their warm ups. They they cheered on the goal when that happened. But we got to see uh, Michelle Prince come into the game, man, for the first time. Was really hoping maybe she'd get a goal because I was like, let's get that record, baby. But uh, she's been she's been injured for a bit, right? From the uh, from the women's gold cup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but what do you think of her? I mean, she she got a good thirty minutes or so to play. Yeah, I mean, I think she looked pretty good knocking off the yeah. rust first time in a, in a game situation. So yeah, I, th- I thought she looked pretty good and she was contributing right away. Yeah, so I'm happy to see kind of what she looks like once she's gets some more time and integrated into the team. Well, and this game was far from over too. I mean, a one goal lead, you're not feeling too comfortable. You're like, man, all it takes is one break away from them and we're sunk. You know, one so. bad deflection, one ball that comes into the box and you know, ping pongs around. There was some of that, dude. There was a ball that just kind of sat there and I'm like, oh no, someone's going to poke that in. And they, they did clear it, which is awesome. But, uh, dude, it's a Chewinga had a couple more great opportunities yeah. in the late, like the last 10 minutes or so. Um, seven minutes of stoppage time, which I felt like a lot. It did feel like a lot. However, my brother, who's not really soccer savvy, he was like, what do you think? Probably 10 minutes of extra time. I was like, no, probably like five. And it was seven. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Split the difference. You, you're right though. Like at the end of the game, what a, what a great weapon to have. You're up, right? You're, you're up one or two goals and you have not in this game, but you're up one. And they're pressing. They're trying to get that equalizer. And you have Chewinga just waiting for the opportunity to get into a foot race with the ball. That has got to always be a threat for that defense. Even, you know, even if they're attacking, like you just can't take your 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 eye off of her because the moment you do, you know, she's a blur. And she had a couple opportunities. Had one on one with the keeper a couple times. Um. You know, uh, great saves by Murphy, by the way. She made some, you know, some diving saves that got just a hand on it. So yeah. she did what she could. But uh, it could have very easily been 3-0. Three, three could have been, man. But then could have could have ended 1-1. One, one. So, I mean, you got yeah. some shouts to the defense there. Yep. Um, it's just, dude, we've scored uh, in eight of nine games, 21 total go- goals. Uh, still our plus 10 goal differential still top of the league, man. I mean, we're just, we're, we're, we're putting them away. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. It's, it's very fun to watch this team. Um, just, I, I, only thing I could improve, improve on is like, what, what's this parking lot situation? We got painted, it's painted gravel out there. (laughs) Oh, I, I got to navigate the, uh, the, the media parking for the first time and I, did not know what I was doing. Really? Yeah. So I, well, I didn't do any research beforehand. I was like, I, you know, before I would take a shuttle, right? I know where to go. Sure. So like I try to go, Rove was blocked, try to go another route, blocked. I'm like, okay, forget this. GPS is saying go this way. So go around. So I went to do that. It was blocked. So I like gonna go all the way around the stadium. And I, because I was using uh, Google, like to tell me where to go, but obviously it doesn't account for some of those road closures and stuff like that. So I eventually got there, but uh, it was a nice learning opportunity for me. What time did you get in the stadium? About an hour before. Oh, okay. But I was, yeah, I was trying to get there before then. But yeah. very cool, very cool, man. Our uh, we're 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 unbeaten in uh, uh, well eleven games technically. You know, we're, we're since bid dating back to twenty twenty three season. Um, wow, yeah. I guess the club record. Is 13 games unbeaten, which was set in 2022. If you remember that fun little season, was that our trip to DC? That was, yeah, it was that year. What a fun time! What a wild time that was. A roller uh, this this whole club has just been like, oh, not so great. We're new. We're building. Oh, just kidding. We're now in the championship. Oh, no, nah, we're we're bad again. 
not great. And then here we are, top of the league. And I'm like, there's no middle ground. Like you're just, it's the literal t- roller coaster here. It's crazy. I mean, we've had what, three managers? So we've had uh, Hugh Williams and then Potter and then um, Claire Bloom, Vlatko. It was like we finally got a little bit of stability going on. And, and it feels like Vlatko knows what he's doing. The man feels very calm too in how he coaches. He doesn't seem overly emotional. Doesn't seem like he yells or gets mad. Just very much in the zone. He seems Zen. very in control yeah. of, of everything. And, you know, he talked a lot about the mentality of the team, which is something he's clearly trying to build. It's just a strong mentality. Going on the road, we're not being flashy with like celebrations. A lot of people don't yeah. like it. That's fine. But, uh, you know, he's just trying to, to be that kind of gritty Midwest type toughness that Kansas City embodies. And that seems like that's the mentality he's trying to put into the team. And it's it's getting results, you know. Man. We're not getting crazy celebrations, but top of the table. So I, I've had enough mentality talk for a lifetime after hearing Peter Vermees talk about all that mentality over the weekend. Uh, one club is not doing so hot and one is doing great. My my allegiances are it's you know it's perfectly balanced really one's on top of the world one's yeah. thinking and they, they kind of balance each other out and give me pleasure i guess <laughs> what are you gonna do but dude they uh the saturday another home game um you know we're meeting race racing louisville at 8 30 at the game at, at the stadium so late night probably get home around midnight good times i'll tell you one thing though what do you even say about this midweek Seattle game? Like, I don't feel like I can focus too much on it. I feel like this Seattle team was time wasting early on. And I was like, girls, you are at home. Like, what do you, don't you want to win in front of you? Don't you want to beat the number one team at home? Like, what are you taking your time for? Do you feel yeah. like that's you? It, it did. It, it felt like <laughs> the two coaches came to an agreement to you know play some subs or or give a lot of their starters a rest like they just that midweek game was a tough stretch for both teams so they just i felt like they just came to a agreement to to just get their subs in and i think that's exactly what happened like when that lineup came out my first thought was you know we're going to score score goal if we're going to score it's going to be later in the game like it's going to be when our subs our, our starters come in and try to finish off the game it was kind of it was just one of those where we can never get that extra pass into the box. We never found that that runner. We took a lot of shots outside the box a lot. Right. Uh, Claire Hutton had a couple lasers um, that the rain keeper had to make uh, diving saves. Cooper had a couple as well. Um, not our best offensive performance. Uh, taking a look at the XG, the current had a 1.2. The rain had a 0.2. Again, shows our defense. We were always on the front foot, you know. It, we were clearly the better team. We had the best opportunities, but just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. And that's that's just kind of how the game went. I mean, and it just, I didn't like, I don't know, I didn't like at the end of the game when it wrapped up how the fans were You texted pumped. me about this. Did you not hear the uproarious cheering? Like, the fans yeah. were, were thrilled. And I'm like, listen, we just got a draw on the road. We win. That's a win for the team who draws on the road. It's kind of a loss for y'all. So if you're happy, you know, uh, let us know how 12th place is going. It's uh, the weather's fine up here. It just made me kind of like, I don't know, turn my nose up at him and, and be like, is this what you, is this what your expectations are for the season? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't get it. Um, you know, the starting lineup had Lavoje up top with Cooper and Chewing on the yeah. sides. Cool to see uh, Lava J and Cooper get a start. That was neat. Yeah, that that was neat. Uh, Steigletter started on the right side, so that was right. a little different. Um, Robinson, Robinson and Balasager, you know, started on, on the back there. But, uh, of course, the goalkeeper looked like an all-star because that's what happens. Yeah, Ivory, was, Ivory played really well, and she played really well the game prior, too. So she had a nice stretch, although I think they just got absolutely... Well, they. I'm trying to see if they won recently. I think they got blasted. Seattle did. She had like five or six saves in that match, man. She did. Ivory did. Like that's a that's a lot of saves. 
I, I just feel like, uh, uh, you know, it sucks. That, did you hear uh, our co- our colleague Jimmy sent over some sound bites? Did, were you, uh, did you listen to those at all? I did. Uh, we didn't send them over to Nick. We could have if we if we were on top of that, but we're not. Um, <laughs> what, what's your takeaway from listening to Lowe talk about uh, like the travel issues and stuff? I mean, that, that obviously plays into this game. 100%. 100%. They had to like refuel in Denver, thought their, their life was going to end, um, yeah. you know, trying to make it there. I think that's Did she the say of... that they were split up on the way to Houston? Like they didn't even all fly together on the way to Houston? Yeah, like some people had to stay behind. Um, the turbulence, like they were all singing uh, Three Little Birds because the turbulence was so bad. They thought like something might happen on the plane. Oh my God. Um, you know, and again, it, it just kind of feeds into this past Saturday. They went through all that, the Houston rain delay, turbulence, got in, got a, a, a road point, right? Got a road point, came back home and, and beat a tough team. You know, that. Yeah. I think that that speaks volumes. That's important, dude. They're gonna they're gonna sleep this week because uh, Lo also mentioned like she she knows she was up for like twenty four hours and she's sure other people were too. Um, you do you remember those days of staying up twenty four hours? That the thought of that is horrible today. If I stay up twenty four, if I don't have a drop of of, of alcohol, but I stay up twenty four hours, I feel like I probably I'm drunk the next day just just off of no sleep. My body yeah is a wreck. I mean, it's like what 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 is this playing uh uh you know playing Super Smash Brothers all night with your friends, uh, eating Taco Bell, drinking Mountain Dew? Like, dude, I just can't do that anymore. I, I played the new Call of Duty with a buddy of mine when it came out uh, months ago or whenever it did, and I stayed up to like three thirty, I think. Oh. And the whole next day, I was just the least productive person. Like, it, I was shut down. I was shut down. It was it, it's it's sad. Was that uh, was that a work night? No, okay. Because that would suck. It's uh, I I was all on it though, man. Like playing the you know the Gears of War phase and also uh, Halo and all that was a big one for me. So, but I'll tell you, it's it's the girls did it, man. They they got a point on the road and they got another point on the road and then came home and got three. What more can you ask for out of that? Out of what they went through? Credit to them. I mean, yeah. when you watch the games, we should have won both games, if we're being honest. We should have come back with six points and not two. Agreed. But given given all the circumstances, man, you, you, you can't say anything negative about it. Negative about it. We got two two road points. Houston won their game, too. So, um, you know, they're not as bad as what their record indicated when we played them. They're currently 10th in the, in the table. So... I don't know. Two two big road points. Nobody got injured. Um, yeah. you know, Steigletter got on the field. So, all in all, good stretch. Well, um, yeah. I mean, you got some you got some newbies, some some meaningful minutes and whatnot. And uh, dude, it's a, we got we got Louisville this weekend. Um, who are kind of struggling, right? I mean, it seems like uh, it's weird, man. Like they're they have they're one win. Team. Yeah. So sitting at eight points in eleventh place, um, goal differential of uh, uh, of two plus two. So this you got to take care of business this week. I know it's an hour later start than normal than what they probably normally play for an evening game. I don't understand why that is because it's not like a Mountain Time Zone team. It's it's actually is not Louisville an hour uh, later than us? I think so. Today Eastern. Yeah, I think so. So I just think like, wow, now their fans got to watch a nine thirty game. That's just that's wild to me. But you know, they're what better. They're better than their record indicates. Like you said, they're eleventh in the table, um, eight points. You know, they they played well eight games, so they're one five and two. A lot of draws. Um, they have a, a, a positive two uh, goal difference. They have some good players, man. Uh, Taylor Korniak or Flint is, is now known. Um, Kanu is good. You got Carson Pickett, Urseg. I mean, they're Lund is a good keeper. Uh, Demello, obviously, like she's always had a heyday against us. So they're a really good team. And taking a look at their last five games. Uh, so taking a look at April thirteenth, they had a draw with San Diego. They beat the brakes off of Utah five one. They had a draw with Gotham, which is not easy. 
They lost to Orlando by one, and they lost to the Spirit by one. Like They are not a bad team. This is not an 11th place team. It's going to be a challenge. It's going to be tough. Um, certainly doable, especially at home, but yeah. it's not going to be an easy game. No, it's not a cakewalk. I mean, but we, we've showed we have, you know, we got the depth. We got people ch- chomping at the bit to come in. Um, We're getting healthier. Getting healthier. It'd be nice to get things done uh, early instead of kind of waiting for a second half goal or something. But uh, you can see how they want to. Like, that's obviously their goal is to get it done early, dude, as they, as they turn people over first, like, right when they get the ball. We take it right back. It's it's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life and where everything's just clicking on all, firing on all cylinders. Our Beautiful. press is pretty incredible. Like, the one thing I've liked about what Vlaco has done is he's – generally speaking, not allowed teams to dictate their style play without consequence. Like we may not be top five in terms of possession, Mm -hmm. but you know, if you're going to, if you're going to take a chance, we're going to make you pay. Oh yeah. And that's what I like about it. Totally. Uh, well, cool, man. We'll, we'll both, we'll both be out at that game. Um, Sure. They found one back back in our regular seats. Kind of missed them. I love that vantage point, uh, seeing the whole field like that from up there. And then uh, when I was down low, I kind of had a blind spot, like in the far corner. Uh, I couldn't really see anything, so it was kind of different that way. Um, yeah, just taking a look ahead a little bit. So, you know, we're talking about uh, trying to break that streak of, of what, 13 or 14 un, unbeaten. Um, obviously, yeah. we have Louisville at home. Then we go to Utah, play the Royals, who are last place. Um, then we have two back-to-back home games. Seattle is coming to Kansas City, and then Chicago. So Chicago's not horrible. They're not horrible. They're you know fifth in the table. Um, They've been winning more away games than they win at home, man. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah. But, I mean, we have an opportunity to break that streak here if we can take care of business at home. Just keep getting points. That's all it is right now, man. And, and something will something will break here. I mean, you'll get, uh, god damn, like Portland, Portland and Chicago are both knocking right there. I mean, I'd say one through five is pretty tightly contested there um, with the only gap being between fifth and sixth, you know? Yeah. Long season, though. A lot more games. Um is that all about the game coming up? Oh, do, do you have any? Yeah, that's all I have. Um, real quick, going back, do we have any toasts of the match that strike your? It's a good. That's a good question, um, dude. If I had to say it, I'm, I let's let's vote here. Let's put a let's put a little vote in the uh, in the sorting hat. Uh, <laughs> little Harry Potter reference. I don't know why I did that. But uh, I, I'm going to throw my hat into the ring for Haley Mace just because she seemed to be all over the freaking field and, like, making the aggressive plays. Um, let's debate. What are you thinking? I, I think there's three that could okay. be. So Mace, I think, is a good one. Um, Dabinia, she came back, played, you know. Started, scored. Started, scored. Um, really was a catalyst for that that offense there. And then Chawinga. Yeah. Who whose work rate is absolutely unmatched? Um, you know, I was talking to Jimmy during the game, and he brought up a good point. How many possessions does Chowinga win on a on a uh, per game just by her effort? Because every time she was running, or every time the defender had the ball, they just put it out of bounds. They didn't try to play around with her. They just put it out, let the defense get back. Yeah, and and I thought that was a really good point by by Jimmy. But sorry, going back to the toast. Um, I'm thinking aggressively. I was thinking hustle wise, but yeah, the obvious concern is Dabinia, the obvious choice. So, toast to the match, Dabinia. Congratulations, Dabinia. Throw up your L's, the Holiday Distillery. Toast to the match to Dabinia. Put that on your accolades. It makes sense, man, because I uh, started her first match in a while, scored her first goal in a while, right place, right time. So. There will be more of those to come. If she's in the lineup, there will be more of those to come. Getting healthier. We only had three players on the injury report, if I'm going off of memory here, and that was uh, Hannah Gloss, uh, 
Zanarato and uh, Mallory Weber. Mallory Weber. Yep. Mallory Weber's always on it, though. That sucks. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Bad deal. Uh, something to talk about here. We are, uh, Casey Curran is set to host the Women's Cup, TWC, at CPKC Stadium. Uh, bro, we got more teams coming in from across the world. Like, this is different than our, uh, uh, the Liga Emeki Feminil Cup. Uh, or, I can't remember the name of it now, but this is different. We're bringing in, uh, some European teams to play a little tournament. The first tournament, there will be a tournament over in Louisville. Is that right? Yeah. And so this is the second one after the Louisville edition. There's a hundred thousand dollar prize pool to win this. Um, that could be pretty awesome. I mean, women's football is growing, man. It's uh, the, the stadium sells out every time. I, I can only imagine it's going to continue to sell out. It's going to open with uh, Atletico de Madrid playing INAC Kobe on August 14th, and the current will face the Sundowns. And then the winners play for the championship on August 17th. And there'll be a consolation match that kicks off prior to that. If you get tickets to these matches, you're getting tickets to two matches per day. Yeah. This is like the old... uh, It's a weekend pass type of deal. Kind of. Except one of them takes place on Wednesday. (laughs) That's not... uh, not Figure it out. Yeah. I do. I I gotta miss the the 17th. I I considered trying to make the 14th work. But... uh, it's going to piss me off to be at the 14th and not able to go to the 17th, especially if we're in the championship, right? But did you, uh, are you going to claim your seat location for this tournament? I already you... did, sir. Already Bye. done. I think yesterday right. was the last day to do it, or today is, I can't remember. Tuesday, expensive. That's when we're recording. I think it's like 80, 88 per ticket for both games or both days. So oh. a total of four games, like 80 bucks. So 80 bucks. Eight, 88, 88 bucks or something. Per ticket for four games? Yeah. You're lying. Yeah. That can't be it. That's, yeah. that's wild. 88 bucks for both days, so you get four games. Well, more than that. You got me looking. I feel that... Uh, um, I don't know, man. I, you, we're excited about this because it's bringing in people, right? It's going to bring in eyes and viewers, and that feels like a smart thing. You know taking a quick moment back when you're talking about women's sports Mahomes gave a gave a pretty good speech about investing in into women's sports so I thought that was pretty passionate really cool glad he did it on the platform he did he's always pushing for it right but he gave it another well-deserved um opportunity but uh so I love he did that um but going back to this real quick yeah man I I love international teams I love to travel I, you know, if I can, I go to soccer games whenever I'm in a different country. Um, traveling's one of my things. So to see other teams come over, man, like I will buy that. I will buy merchandise with it. Like I, to me, it's a whole experience and I'm glad they can continue to, you know, give exposure to, to Japan, to Spain. I believe it's South Africa, give them exposure to the current, but also give Kansas city Americans and WSL exposure to these other teams as well. So um, rising tide raises all boats here, um, in, in my opinion. And it gives some players some time to get out there who might normally not be able to play, you know, um, like Steigletter, you know, it, it, Pfeiffer, right? Like it might give some of these players, Nichelle Prince, uh, Cooper to, you know, all these players to try and regain some form coming back from injury. It gives all of them that type of opportunity. Man, I, I love it. I just hope we, uh, Everybody comes out injury free. That's always my concern. Or but man, I'm I'm uh, it's one of my favorite things playing international teams. So always nice to play more games, uh, to stay in form and all that. I mean that's a big that's a big thing when people when you take international breaks and whatnot is, is losing your form. Um but then Sokowitz. with that uh, yeah, I mean yeah. I'd love to see Sokowitz get on the field. You know, that's like, that's a real possibility. I mean, that's a good that's a good opportunity for France to finally finally rest a little bit. Um, she's been she's been having to get down and dirty a few times. So, um, dude, I want to tell everyone to to keep an eye on this for next next week. We're looking to have a, a player on to speak with. I won't tell you who, but we're both very 
excited about it. It's one of our faves. So it'll be good. Look at you. Look at you smiling. You're like, I, it is one we, of our we've, faves. We've been on, we've been driving the, the wagon for this particular. That is. All aboard, baby. Cool, man. Um, thoughts, concerns, questions, anything else you want to address? No, oh, man, let's just get this win at home. Enjoy being uh, a first, man. You know, it's it's a great time to be a current fan, a women's soccer fan. Just enjoy it. I'm rooting against Orlando this weekend, even though they're playing uh, uh, Seattle. Uh, at Seattle, though, so they're they're excited to celebrate uh, a home draw again, most likely. But we'll... Uh, We'll be back to, to cover it all next week. So if you guys uh, get a chance, leave us five-star rating and review on Apple Podcast. Also on Spotify, you can you can rate us. Um, send us an email, knowtherpod at gmail.com. If you have any questions, concerns, we can address those. Um, anything you want to hear from players uh, in the future. You can follow us on Twitter at knowotherpod, at Dan Couser, at Chris Wright 21 And uh, for Chris Wright, I'm Daniel Couser, and we'll see you next week. Love you.